Uh, Coach, thank you for joining us on the call today. If you would take a minute to tie up the uh, the trip and the win against Memphis, please, and then tell us what you expect to see as you return home to face SMU on Saturday. Okay, thanks, Chuck. Thanks for having me. And um, you know, obviously, it was a huge te- uh, win for our program uh, to go to Memphis and beat a really good team. You know, at their place was a huge uh, win for our program and for the season. Um, thought our kids played very well. And we had to, you know, with, you know, Paxton Lynch, you know, really good quarterback. Coach Fuentes has done a really good job there. And just just really pleased that we were able to play well in a hostile environment. Uh, proud of the way our guys competed. Uh, and so, like I said, I mean, it's obviously it's a big win. And we're really pleased about it. Uh, you know, now we move on. You know, now we move on and uh, get ready for SMU. Uh, I know Coach Morris is, you know, Really good coach. He's doing a lot of things to try to change the culture of their football team. Uh, but our our thoughts right now are just you know try to get healthy, uh, continuing our preparation, and you know try to get ready for SMU. We'll take questions for Coach Niamatololo. Please hit star one on your telephone to uh, to join the queue, and then the operator will introduce you. Okay. Our first question comes from Dick Weiss from the Americans. Congratulations. Hi, Dick. Thank you. Uh, listen, can you talk to me? Uh, you jumped into the top 25 this week. There are four teams from your conference in the, 25, in the top 25. Can you talk to the level of play in the league and how conference play, how, how you guys have adjusted to conference play this year? Well, yeah, like you said, there's there's a lot of good football teams in our conference. Um, you know, it's it's exciting. You know, it's also very difficult because there's so many good teams. Um, but that bodes well for our conference and a conference that's trying to, you know, make their mark on the national scene, um, you know, trying to gain some credibility as an upstart conference. Uh, the one way we had to do that was to win on the field, and so it's really uh, cool to see, you know, four teams in the top 25 but this is definitely a tough conference, and there are some really good football teams. And how about your adjustment to playing in a conference after being an independent for all those years, Coach? Well, just every every game's every week's important. Uh, every game's important. Um, you know, just being independent, obviously, I mean, every game's important when you're independent because you're trying to win each game. But when you're in a conference, then every game – uh, not only counts to your overall record, but also to conference play. So, you know, there's there's that added dimension, that added, um, I guess you could say, pressure to win, you know, because you're in conference play. But uh, we try to prepare for the games the same, because when you prepare for any games, they're they're tough games. But there is an added excitement and that added pressure, uh, you know, a different significance to uh, conference uh, games. Great. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Dan Tortora from Dan Tortora Broadcast Media. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning, Dan. How you doing? Doing well. Thanks for asking. Um, Keenan Reynolds, obviously, we know he can run the ball, but, you know, airing it out and showing that, that he has an arm and he could pass it too, just what you can say about, you know, this past game against Memphis and the fact that, you know, he can be multidimensional and, and open it up when he has to. Well, I think it just, uh, obviously, like you said, that helps us just, you know, on people watching us on film, just recognizing that we definitely can throw the football. And it's, you know, it's not so much that Keenan can't throw the ball, it's just the way we choose to play. It's the way that we choose that we think helps us to be successful, to win and to compete. Um but it's it's never been a, a thing of his skill set that he's not a good passer. He he actually came here as a a shotgun quarterback, uh, and you know Coach Jasper's you know mentored him into a triple option quarterback. But he came here as a as a, as a shotgun quarterback, and so we know that he can je- definitely throw the football, and that's a part of our game that we got to make sure that we stay on point on. You know, because we can't allow everybody to get up on the line of scrimmage and, and crowd the line of scrimmage. And then as as far as Memphis, just what you can say, I mean, obviously you got the victory over them, but they've been a strong team throughout the year. Just what you can say about the level of competition 
that Justin Fuente, Fuente puts up against you and just what you can say about, you know, Memphis's play overall? Well, I got a ton of respect for Coach Fuente and his program. Uh, what he's done there in the last, you know, two years has been, you know, short of remarkable. I mean, that's unbelievable, the things he's done in changing the Memphis program and just changing the whole landscape of their team. Um, you know, Paxton Lynch, like I said, is as good a quarterback as I've seen. Um, you know, they got a lot of good players. You know, it was just one of those days, you know, we played well. And, and we told them, you know, going into this game, you know, I mean, we just had to beat them once. You know, we know it's going to tough, a tough challenge. They're a really good team, but you know, this isn't, you know, basketball or baseball or, or something where it's a best of seven series. You know, we had to find a way to play better than them one Saturday, and fortunately, we did. But they're still a really, really good football team. Thanks, coach. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Dan. Our next question comes from Christopher Heidel from. Herb FM Radio, Baltimore. Hey, Coach Ken. Congratulations on the big win over, over the weekend against Memphis. Thank you. Um, talk about um, this SMU team. Uh, they're very tough, though. I know about their record is like 1-6, and six, but you know, they're a tough 1-6 uh, and six team. What are you going to expect from them on Saturday? Well, like I said, I mean, they've also had a you know tough schedule, too, the guys that they've played. You know, they played some guys that are already, you know, TCU, um, playing Houston, you know, already playing Temple. I mean, they've played some guys in the top 25, some really good football teams. And so they've had a tough schedule. Uh, you know, I know Coach Morris is trying to establish their culture. You can see them starting to, you know, they're offensively, you know, doing a lot of good things as they try to, you know, comp- continue to try to build their culture. But um, got great respect for them, great respect for Coach Morris and who he is as a coach. And, you know, the bottom line, we're still the Naval Academy. You know, we're a team that's got to come to play every week. Uh, we're smaller than everybody we play, slower than everybody we play. So we just got to be ready to go every week. And I was reading this morning in the breakfast table that um, the college playoff people might consider adding you guys into the mix, you know, with all these, you know, New Year's Day 6 uh, games, New Year's Eve. Oh, I said, what does that mean for you, knowing that now the national attention is towards maybe football, and you might be going somewhere instead of down the street or your home ballpark for that, that ball game in Annapolis? Well, it's exciting, you know, but with all of that said, you know, I mean, the the motto of our team this year has been 1-0, and which the seniors and our captains, Keenan Reynolds and Bernie Serra, have come up with. And, uh, you know, we just get ready for the next game. You know, as your original question, we get ready for SMU and try to play as good as we can. And, you know, we just see where the chips fall. But um, we got to take this. This is a week-to-week deal, and we just kind of try to keep pressing forward. Well, good luck this week. Thank you. And we'll take our next question from Austin Cox from Best College Sports News Network. Hey, Coach. Uh, again, congratulations on the win. Thank you, Austin. And uh, also, I mean, everybody's already kind of touched on it. It's just one of those things that comes with the territory. Um, how do you keep your team focused? Could you talk a little bit on how you keep them not looking past a team like SMU that just put up 40 points on a tough Temple defense? How, how do you keep them focused on that week-to-week mindset? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question, and it's I think it's the – it's not only us, but I think that's everybody. You know, everybody, whether you win or whether you lose, you know, if you lose, you're you're trying to move on and getting over it. And if you're winning, uh, you're trying to move on and not, you know, uh, worry about any of the praise or people patting you on the back. you got to find a way to press forward. And so, you know, you try your best as a coach to address it with your team, um, you know, remind them who you are, you know, and, you know, and we just try your best to try to keep pressing forward. But a big part of it is just trying to make sure you control what you can control is your preparation. Don't lose sight of that. Don't change things that way. Just making sure that your preparation is pure and it's, it's sound and it's detailed. Um, don't cut any corners. And just making sure you're, you're focused that way. And then hopefully hopefully you're ready to go on Saturdays. But it's that is a great question, but that's, a, that's the job of every coach to – try to press forward week to week. 
All right. Appreciate your time, Coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. Coach, we thank you for your time this week. We look forward to hearing from you again next Monday. Thanks, Chuck. All right. Again, that is Coach uh, Ken Ken Yuma.